Hello everybody. Um, seeing as we're on lockdown at the moment and we've got plenty of time on our hands, I thought that I would tackle a subject that people have asked me about in the past. I've called it a rough guide to skew teas. So um, oh, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Kelly Farina. I'm the author of Mastering Paragliding and the head coach at Austrian Arena. If you've got any questions about the following clips, please write them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you um, with the answers if I have them. Uh, let's crack on. So why are skew teas important and why do I rely on them in the morning? Well, the first thing is that they tell me how high cloud base is going to be. This tells me uh, what crossings I can undertake and cannot undertake, okay? Um, any potential overdevelopment throughout the day tells me how long the day will potentially be and I will factor in an average speed and uh, work out what I can set for my group that day. Will also tell me if there are any faster or slower layers in the atmosphere um, which can produce turbulence but we're going to talk about that at a later stage. Can even tell me what to wear as I will know what the temperature is at cloud base. So these things appear to be quite daunting and uh, they didn't be too taxing, just need a bit of practice and uh, some basic understandings of what the constants are, the data fields and um, how to plot on them. And we're gonna start with the constants now. Okay, so the first constant is going to be altitude. This is depicted as pressures on the side. So we've got 1,900, 800, all the way up to 200. Now, these are ISO bars. Now the word ISO means the same as or similar in value, okay? And these are heights. You can look deeper into these heights um, yourself, but it's basically the first three are what I'm really interested in Sea level, 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 meters. That's the first one. Okay, so the second constant are these red lines that go from bottom left to top right, and they are known as isotherms. Okay, so everything along these lines is of equal temperature. So we've got T equals zero, T equals 10, T equals 20, and they're degrees centigrade. Okay, so that's the second constant. The third constant goes from bottom right to top left. Okay, now this is the dry adiabatic lapse rate, or as the thermal leaves the ground, that's the rate at which it cools as it rises through the atmosphere. Okay, so it's a very important uh, line. That's the D-A-L-R. Now the next constant is the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. These are the uh, thin blue lines that are curved. Now these are the uh, lines that once a thermal has turned into a cloud, if it's allowed to, um, these are the lines that the air inside the cloud will call that. Okay, and the final constant, we get there in the end, are these faded blue lines that go up at about 55 degrees and they're the saturated specific humidity. That's to do with how many grams in a kilogram of air. Now I'm not sure why they go off at a obtuse angle like that. Uh, they just do and they're vital for finding out uh, information on this chart. If anyone actually knows why they go off at that angle, then maybe you can leave a uh, message in the comments. Well, that was the first part about the constants. Um, if you've got any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments and uh, I'm going to get on with building the second one. Should be done in a few days, so stay tuned. All the best and uh, yeah, good luck with your lockdown.